Things we've been having. Yes, yes. Jesus. Thank you. Nice and Amen. Well, today is a extra special day for me. Okay. Amen. Uh, my friend Tony Alford is with us. Woo! He is one of the I was teaching up in the Justice Center. Yeah. And he got he got out uh, this past week. Yeah. And I'm gonna be baptizing him in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that he is with us. Amen. 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 And uh, I'm excited about his future. Yeah. I, uh, when I talk to the men out there, I tell them, you know what? I don't see you where you are. All right, come on, buddy. I see you where you go. Yes. And I don't talk to them like they're in. I talk to them like they're out. Yes. I believe. Come on now. That one day, they're going to be out. And I told them last, last time I was with them, I said, by the time I get done with you guys, man, you guys are going to know that you know that you know. Yeah. He's a, he was a real good student in our class. Amen. Thank uh, God. Uh, puts 100% effort into the lessons. And uh, I don't think I, I, I think I, I read one of his papers that hasn't been 100 yet. Amen. It's been 100. They've all been 100. Right. Amen. But he's done. He takes it serious. Thanks God serious. So I'm excited that he's with us today. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you. Stand with me for the reading of the word. Romans chapter number 6. Romans chapter number 6. I'll keep it simple today. I'll keep it simple today. Preach. We're going to go back to basics. Amen. 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 Romans chapter number 6. We're going to start first of all. You have that say amen. Amen. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm. No. He answered his own question and said, God forbid. Mm -hmm. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Mm -hmm. In other words, when we've been washed, why do we want to go back to getting dirty? All right. Mm. Know ye not that so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his yes. death? Yes. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism yes. into death. Mm -hmm. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Yes. Yeah. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Can't yes. wait for that day. Amen. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. For he that is dead is free <coughs> from sin. From sin. Yes. That should be something that sticks with us every single day. Yes. yes. Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. 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 We cannot use grace mm. as an excuse right. Right. to commit sin. Right. Well, I'll make it to church on Wednesday. Well, I'll make it on Sunday. Preacher will give me a good word. I, I'll be okay. Don't get it twisted. Come on. <laughs> because the Lord yes. is going to require every man's blood. Come on. He's going to require the soul of every human being. Yes, Lord. And we just don't know when that time is. Right. So we've got to play this game to the fullest. Amen. And we got to do everything to get there. Yes. Into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We've got to stay unspotted from the world. Yes. We've got to shun sin. We gotta get it out of our lives. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 So I'm gonna preach you on this title, this real simple, born again. Yes. Come on. Now. It's the word. Yes. We all need to be born again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Born again. Yes. For in this very same book in Romans, the Bible does say, For the wages of sin is death. Yes. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. For the wages of sin is death. Yes. We don't want to play with sin. 
No. Amen. Let me tell you something. Flopping back and forth between what you want to be and what you don't is no good. Amen. I want to be a Christian. I don't want to be a Christian. Mm. You can't have the best of both worlds. You can't live in the world and be in church. Ooh. Right up here. This is where it counts. If you can come to church all day long, but not register in here. I came to show somebody I came, but you're not up here. Amen. Not up there. Because the Lord can read your thoughts. He's not playing with you. He's not playing. We got to be born again. It's important that we are born again. Lift your hands to the Lord. Because everybody in this building needs to hear this from the youngest to the oldest. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We give you glory and honor. We give praise to you for what you're doing in this place. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the choir. I thank, thank you for the song. Yes. Our best days we have not seen. And I know you're going to bring them around. And I pray, Lord, that our hearts and our minds will be open to you this morning. That we receive the word. That we would understand and know that we need to be crucified daily. Yes. And walk away from sin. And if there's somebody in this building, Jesus, who has not been baptized in your name, not been filled with your spirit, Lord, that this morning, that you would do what you do best, and that's to save us from ourselves. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that everybody that loves us, say amen. 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 God bless you. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. In order for us to understand what salvation really is, we've got to understand why we need salvation. Yeah. We've got to understand where did sin come from? What was Paul talking about? Sin. The things that we do wrong. The definition of sin simply means to miss the mark. Paul said, I press toward the mark. Yeah. The mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Our focus should be on trying to get to him. Yeah, Our focus should be on trying to get into the kingdom. Yes. So we press toward the mark. But when we fall short, it is called sin. And sin means we miss the mark. Mm. But in order for us to understand the end, we have to understand the beginning. Mm. To know the end, you've got to understand the beginning. Where did it all begin? It all began in Genesis chapter number 3. That's where we first see sin. Actually, we could go further back than that, but I'm talking about sin for humanity. We could talk about the angels. We could have, we could talk about Satan and all that came with him. They sinned against God and landed themselves here on the earth. This is not their home. I say again, this is not their home. They have no home. But the home that they are going to, they know that it is coming. Their home is the lake of fire. Yes. And they know that here they can do nothing without God's permission. But it doesn't change the fact that God created them and us with the power of choice. We have the power to decide over our lives what we want to do. The Holy Ghost cannot override what you want to do. He will not step into history and change it for you. He will not change your mind. You've got to change your own mind. You've got to say, I'm going to walk away from sin. I'm going to do the right thing, but it's got to be a choice that you want to make. Nobody can make it for you. You can't walk on the coattails of somebody else's salvation. You've got to do this by yourself. For the Bible does declare that you got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. Many people try to do that. Yeah. They try to ride on the coattails of somebody else. If I hang around them long enough, maybe I'll get right. No, that's not how it works. How it works is you got to make up your mind to get right. Because you won't be walking circumspectly with somebody else. Yeah, that's it. And how can two walk together except they agree? So we've got to find it in our heart, in our mind, somewhere to say, you know what? I'm kind of tired of this life that I'm living. Yeah. I'm kind of tired of the way things are going. I'm tired of doing the wrong thing. Come on. And make a decision okay. 
to get your life right with God. Yeah. I would not be here standing behind this pulpit if it had, I had not made that decision on my own. That's right. Nobody can make it for me. Yes. As, as deep as my family roots go into this, into this gospel, into this doctrine, nobody could make me go to church. Right. Dad couldn't make me go to church. My uncles couldn't make me go to church. None of my family could make me go to church. They couldn't get me into the house of God. Every time, as a matter of fact, every time they tried to get me in the house of God, I never went. <laughs> my dad told me, he said, son, when are you going to get back to church? I said, Pop, you ask me that one more time, I'm going to grow my hair long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I had to tell him that because he, long hair on a guy, my dad's old school. Yeah. And I had a couple of cousins that used to grow long hair down in their shoulders, a little bit past it. Man, he would let him have it. A couple of his sister's kids. So when I told him that, he was like, I better be quiet. He didn't come to church. One more time. Bro, his hair long. He just got to look at me. I said, okay, then leave me alone. I had to make the choice on my own. Nobody could force me to do it. But I had to come to my mind and say, you know what? I'm tired of the way that my life is going. I'm tired of nothing ever working out. I'm tired of, uh, of going backwards. I'm tired of, I feel like I'm gaining yes. ground, but I'm losing ground at the same time. Yes. I'm not getting anywhere. Yes. And I said, I got to quit. Yes. So I made a choice. choice. So we all have the power of choice. Yes. We have the power to decide. And that's what I love about God is he cannot get in the middle of your business. Right. If this is not what you want to do, then leave God alone. Uh -oh. But you can't get in the middle of God and your world and your life. And you want to be on the outside and kind of want to be on the inside. And then you want to be on the outside. And you want to come back to the inside. And you want to, you can't live your life because you live on borrowed time. And you don't know when your last day is. You don't know when your last day is. You don't know what's going to happen when you walk out of this church. Right. You don't know what's going to happen when you got to face Monday. But you better know that there is a devil that's waiting on the outside of this church building. And he's just waiting for you to come back out so he can get you caught back into what you are already into. So when you make a decision, you got to make it for life. This right here is a life decision. It's not a going back and forth decision. It's not like getting a new job and getting out of it and going to another job. This ain't no part-time gig. This ain't the National Guard. This is where you are. This ain't no weekend warrior status. This is active duty army soldier. G.I. Show. I can talk about the National Guard because I was in it. My sister too. So there. My sister was too. Well, say no part time. You gotta be born again. You gotta be born. Sin came at the choice of human hands. Adam and Eve decided that they were gonna be tempted of the devil and partake of this fruit that was forbidden. That's pretty sad when you got a whole garden of trees to choose from. <laughs> right. And the one that you want. Say it again, Pastor. Right. The wrong one. Oh, oh, oh. Say it again. I mean, think about it. You know how many species of oranges there are? Do you know how many species of avocados there are? Do you know how many species of apples there are? Do you know how many? And there's pineapples and bananas and all kinds of fruit and all kinds of good stuff to eat. Right. And the one that they wanted to eat off of was the bad one. Right. You know why? It's because just like your kids. As soon as you know, they ain't even thinking about touching a stone. They're not thinking about sticking their finger in a light socket. But as soon as you tell them don't do that, their curiosity goes into what I want right. to happen if I do. Because the law told me not to do this yes. and not to do that. I just went ahead and tried it anyway. Mm. And it made me a sinner. Right. And this is where in Romans 8 he said, well, there's no power in the law to overcome sin. Mm. This is 
why we need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because the Holy Ghost is what gives us that power to overcome. He gives it, he gives it yes. mind. And he says, wait a second, bub. Hold on. You can't go that direction. You can't do yes. that. You need to walk. Because when you were locked up in your sins, it was your flesh driving you. It was your Throw that 
that stuff right back in your face. I was having a conversation with somebody and we were talking about that. The devil likes to throw everything back in your face. Yeah. Right. He doesn't know your future, but he knows your past. Yes, he the does. Lord will never bring up your past yes, up against you. He takes it and locks it down into the deepest yes. part of the ocean yes. where nobody can get to it. But the problem is that devil knows what you've been into because he's been watching yes. you your whole life. He's afraid of every male child Come in this on. building. Woo, He's afraid of every man. Yes. Come on. And why is he afraid of every man? Because he's afraid. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what God Come on. has got planned for your life. Yeah. He can't see your future. So he's afraid. And his fear comes out of Man, if this guy was to ever turn into somebody like Paul, Come on. and I gotta find a way to keep that from happening. Yeah. This is why when in Egypt, Pharaoh sent out an edict to kill every male child. This is why Herod in Jerusalem sent out an edict to kill every male child because he was so mad. But that devil is afraid of every male child. This is why. We don't have the number of men in church that we do have women in church because men Come on, speak that truth. are being led away yeah. by the appetites of the flesh. Come on, say it. Not saying that women aren't, yeah. but women are more sensitive to God than men are. Yeah. Say it again, Pastor. This is why more women are saving their husbands yeah. than husbands saving their wives. Yeah. Because women know how to feel bad. They know how to get down and cry. They know how to put their feelings on their sleeve. They know how to worship. They know how to pray. They know, yes. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a woman yes. instinct that the Lord gave them when they created them. But they have this in them so they can pray for their children, pray for their husbands. But I'm telling you right now, more women are easily saved than when you bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all that he can do for them, they're all with this 
humanity. This is the very things that the angels wonder how in the world you didn't even give us a chance to repent. This is what Satan said. You didn't give us a chance to repent. We didn't have that opportunity. I made my choice and you cast me down. And here you made an immoral creature. Something with flesh and blood. That all they do is mistakes. All they do is mess up. And I don't understand how it is that you can forgive them. I don't understand how it is that when they fall down, you can pick them back up. I don't understand how it is that every time they make a mistake, you're still going to love them. You're still going to cry over them. You're still going to put your arms around them. You're still going to nurture them. You're Thank still going to do it. That's the only way. 
There is no other way. There is no other doctrine. <laughs> All that Trinitarian stuff is made up. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, uh, something that they came up with in 325 AD at the Nicene Council. They decided that Father, Son, Holy Ghost was going to be the standard way to baptize people. They took it completely out of because that was what the problem was back then. Right. The problem was, well, how do we be saved? Because, see, the Catholics didn't want to believe that in the name of Jesus Christ. But the apostles, in their doctrine, said, no, this is what Jesus said. This is how we are taught. This is what he said to do. And so this great confusion came. What are we going to do and how are we going to do it? So can you imagine a bunch of men get together in a council and agree on the best way for your life? This is the best way for all of humanity to just Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Oh, because that devil's smart. Don't ever, don't ever think that he is not very clever. Right. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was doing. Oh, yeah. He knew that bringing this confusion into the church was going to be the best thing for the kingdom of hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, if I can get them confused, right. he can get let me tell you why. He got them on this confusion mm -hmm. because he lost at the cross. Right. He lost at the cross. When Jesus was crucified on him, he thought that he had won. He thought, okay, well, this was this was a Messiah. I got him hanging on the cross. I got him. I got him right where I want him. I, he's bleeding. He's about to die. And when he gave up the ghost, when he committed his spirit into the hands of the Lord, he gave up the ghost. The devil thought he had won. The devil thought he had won. When Jesus came out, he put in the minds of the, of the scribes and the Pharisees, you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to make up a story because those guys knew the truth. But he said, you know what? They got scared. And they said, man, we can't go down like this. We're going to look like fools if we go down like this. So what we need to do is we need to make up a story that the disciples came by at night, stole his body, and buried it somewhere else. Making Jesus dead. But they were too late. Right. Because when Jesus came out of the tomb, everybody went running down there. They were like, oh, when Mary first saw him, she was like, there ain't nobody here. She began to cry. Yeah. And the angel of the Lord was standing right, why are you crying, Mary? Really? Why? Because they taken my Lord. I don't know what they've done. Oh, no. That same Jesus that you saw 